when you get a new computer, a lot of the things are set up on that computer the way the people who created the operating system want you to use them, which may not be the best way for you to use them. I'm going to go through some of the things that you should look at and modify to make the use of your computer a much more efficient process. I'm going to start with the taskbar. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the interface, the taskbar is this bar that goes all the way across the bottom of your screen. And I'm going to begin by focusing on the left side of the taskbar, which is more than a third of the screen. And it turns out most of these things you will never use. So why have them take up all this space if you're not going to use them? Let's start with this little white box, which is actually Cortana. This is Microsoft's answer to Siri. There's two things about it. The first is, I don't know anybody that uses it. And the second thing is you can get rid of it very easily from this screen, but still access it with just one keystroke. So let me show you how to get rid of it. What we're going to do is we're going to right click on the taskbar in a spot where there's nothing. This will bring up a menu. And if you look closely, you'll see there's a section called Cortana. Click on that and then select Hidden. This will hide that white box. It did make Cortana go away. It just gave you back a lot of useful real estate on your taskbar. The next thing let's look at are these icons that are pinned to the taskbar. Now there's two ways you should work with the interface to open programs. One of them is by pinning things to the taskbar. Perfectly fine option. The problem here is half of these icons you'll never use. So let me show you how to get rid of the ones you're not going to use. For instance, if I right click on the mail icon, that's the first one that you're not going to use, I can unpin it from the taskbar and then it's gone. Same thing with the uh, App Store. I can right click on that and it's gone. Like I said, there are two ways to work with uh, loading programs. One is the taskbar. The other is the start menu. To customize the start menu, begin by clicking on the start button, the little icon in the corner. Now you can click on this with your mouse or a much quicker way is you just press the Windows key. The Windows key does exactly the same thing as clicking on that button with your mouse. So either press the Windows key or click on this button with your mouse and that will bring up uh, the start menu. On the left is an alphabetical list of everything installed in your computer and on the right is the start menu that you can customize. Now Microsoft has gone through and pre-populated this with everything they want you to use. Personally, uh, out of all this stuff, I, I might use Microsoft Edge. That's the only thing really I ever use off of this list. So let me show you how to get rid of things. If you point to one of the icons and right click, it'll bring up a menu that lets you unpin that object from start and it's gone. Typically, I repeat this process until everything's gone. Now that my start button is clear, I can begin to add things. Once again, I press the Windows key and that brings up the start menu. But watch this. If I start typing something, I don't have to click anywhere. I just start typing. Let's say I want to open the Chrome browser. So I start typing C-H-R-O. And before I get the whole word out, it finds Google Chrome. So remember how I told you you could get to Cortana without having that big white box? What well, turns out if you hit the start button and just start typing, it starts typing into, into Cortana for you. So you don't need that big white box on the screen. So I have found Google Chrome by just typing a few letters of the word Chrome. I want to add this to my start menu. Now, if I right click on this, I actually have a couple of options. I could pin it to the taskbar. And if you prefer to work that way, that's this is how you pin it there. Or you can pin it to the start menu. If I do this, it's going to be located right at the top of the start menu forever and ever. Anytime I want to get to it, all I have to do is hit the Windows key and it's right there. 
So let's repeat this process for some other programs. Let's say I want Firefox. I type a few letters of Firefox. It finds Firefox, right click it, add it to the start menu. If I want to find Word, I type a few letters of the Word program, it finds it, I can add that to my start menu. So I'm started to accumulate a few things in here. Let's say I want Internet Explorer. If I type a few letters from the word Internet, I find Internet Explorer. Now this isn't to be confused with Edge, Microsoft's new browser. It's not the same program as Internet Explorer, even though the icon looks a lot like the old Internet Explorer. So I've gone through and found the Office programs and the different browsers, and I put them on my Start menu, but it's kind of a jumbled mess. How do I make this, uh, arrange this into something that's a little more useful? What if I were to click on the Word icon and drag it down to the bottom in an open spot, kind of like this? I drop it there. Now Word, that icon will stay right there. So I can rearrange things however I want to arrange them. I like to work with my browsers all together, my Office programs all together, my graphics programs all together, so I can move things around. So here's what it looks like when I'm finished. All I did was drag things around so they look the way I wanted them to look. And now, anytime I want to get to any one of those programs, all I have to do is press the Windows key and the menu pops right up and I can open up the program that I want to use. Let's talk about the background on your screen. You can see that Microsoft loads this uh, Windows iconic graphic in the background. And there's a couple reasons you want to get rid of this. The first one's pretty simple. Anytime that I'm doing some work, I can't see on my desktop. So why would I have a picture on my desktop if I'm never going to see the picture on my desktop. Secondly, and you might say, well, I have an icon on my desktop. Remember, the way we start programs is we click on the Start menu and we get the program icons that we use often. Or I could just type part of a name of a program and find it no matter where it is uh, in my Windows installation. Another thing is pictures make your computer run slower. And I've never had someone want their computer to run slower, especially putting something on the desktop that they're never going to see. So for this reason, we're going to get rid of the picture that we have on our background. To do that, I right click anywhere in the blank space of my screen and I select personalize. This will bring up another window and under background, I can drop down where it says picture, I can drop that down and select solid color. This gets rid of the picture and just makes one color on the whole screen. I'll get a selection. I click the color that I want and I have a solid background. So I've got the menu set up, the taskbar set up. Now I've got to go find all of my stuff, all of my files. We use Google Drive for all of our files. So I want to install, actually it's already installed. I want to set up Drive File Stream to connect all of my Google Drive to my PC. So I start by hitting the Windows key. That's going to bring up the menu and I'm going to type Drive. That finds Google Drive Stream. Now you might say, why don't I right click and add this to the start menu? The answer is fairly simple. Once I sign into this, it's going to run every time I run Windows. So I don't need to add it to the start menu because I'm probably never going to click on this icon again, and I don't want to pollute the start menu with a bunch of things that I really don't use that much. You should reserve that space for things that you use often. So I'm going to click on Drive File Stream. I'm going to log in with my username, put in my password. I'm going to get some explanation of what I just installed, three or four little screens, and now I can see I have the Google Drive file stream icon. This icon tells me that my computer is now connected to my Google Drive. Anything that I save on my computer in, in my Google Drive folder will automatically go online to my Google Drive. The way you get to your actual file, you use something called File Explorer. You can get to this in a couple of ways. One of them is you can click the icon 
that comes pre-pinned to the taskbar. Or you can use the shortcut key where you hold down on the Windows key and tap the letter E. E stands for Explore. Once you open up Explore, you're going to see all the, of the folders on your hard drive. If you click on this PC in the left margin, you're going to see that you have a C drive. And if you've installed Drive File Stream, you're going to have a G drive. This G drive is everything that's on your Google Drive. So if I double click on the G drive, it's going to open up the contents of my G drive. You can see on the left, I have something called Google Drive File Stream G drive. But up at the top, I have something that looks redundant. This redundant part is a section called Quick Access. To start with, Microsoft has put some things here that it thinks I'm going to use a lot. But I can customize this. If there's a folder that I want to get to very quickly at any time, I can add it to this section. So let's say that I have on my Google Drive a folder called Classes where I keep all the content related to my classes. All I have to do is drag that over into the Quick Access area and that will become a permanent part of my, my Quick Access menu. Now anytime I open up the File Explorer, that link is going to be there. If I click on that link, it takes me directly to my G Drive, to my Drive, to my Classes folder just with one click. So you can populate the Quick Access area with things that you use often so you can get to them quickly. You can see in my Classes folder I have folders for each one of uh, the classes I might be taking. One of them I've named Digital Photography. Let me talk specifically about what are called file associations when I look at the contents of my Digital Photography folder. File associations are the connections between files and the programs that run them. So when I click on a certain kind of file, that file is connected to a specific program. So a Word document opens Word, an HTML file opens a browser, and so on. So if I look at the files that I have in my digital, digital photography folder, which is in classes on my G drive, notice I have three files, but they look like the same file. You can't have two files with the same name and a folder, let alone three. And there's no like goofy stuff going on here with hidden spaces or something. These are three files that are named the same, even though they're different files. Now, if I look a little bit closer at the View tab in Explorer, there's a checkbox right here that says File Name Extensions. Every file has a three-letter extension that is specific to that kind of file. So if I check this box, notice my three files are three different kinds of files. Even though they're all kinds of graphics files, one's a GIF, one's a JPEG, one's a PNG file. Now what I can do is I can tell Windows, whenever I click on a certain file, to open up a specific program. So if I were to double click on the PNG file, the first time I do this, Windows is going to pop up this box where it highly recommends that I use the Microsoft Photo Viewer, which, trust me, isn't very good. Personally, I like Irfan View. It's a free, very fast image viewer. That's why I use it. It's free. It's very fast. It's a good combination. But I always want to use this program, so I'm going to check this box. It says, always use this app to open this kind of file. When I click on OK, it opens. This is what that file happens to look like inside of Urban View. Now I could do the same thing for the JPEG file that's next to it. I click on it. It says, hey, do you want to open this with photos? I say, no, I want to use Urban View. I check the box so it always uh, uses this app. Once again, here's what the JPEG looks inside of Urban View. 
you could go through file by file and associate them with a certain program, but it turns out there's a way to do this in bulk. If you click on the Windows key and then type default, you should be prompted for default app system settings. Click on that. And this will show all of the categories of programs where you can associate different files with these categories of programs. Notice that the photo viewer doesn't have a default icon in there because I changed PNG and JPEG away from the default Microsoft viewer. Otherwise, that would just have the Microsoft photo viewer. Now in bulk, if I click on choose a default, it pops up a list of all the things, including the one Windows recommends, which is the Microsoft Photos program. But I can click on any one of these that I want, and then that becomes the default program that r runs anytime I double click on a file that's a photo. For videos, the video player that comes with Windows isn't very good, but there's a very good free player called VLC. So I can select the video icon and say, I want to use VLC as my default. Likewise, with my web browser, it defaults to Edge. If I click on that, I can select whichever browser that I want to use. Microsoft is so adamant that you use Edge. If you try to switch away, it says, hey, are you sure you want to do that? You can say, yes, I'm sure. Switch away. And as I've selected, Chrome becomes my default browser. Now, there will be times when there's a certain type of file that you want to associate with the program based on whatever that file extension is. At the bottom, you can see I can choose default apps for specific file types. If I click on that, I'm going to get a list of hundreds of file types, dot, three letter, or four letter extensions. If I scroll down and find PDF, PDFs by default open with Microsoft Edge. Well, I don't want that. The best thing to open a PDF with is Adobe Acrobat Reader. It's also free. So if I click on Microsoft Edge, I get a list of all the things installed on my computer, and I can select the one that I want PDF files to be opened with. In this case, Adobe Acrobat Reader. Now you might say, I don't know what kinds of file extensions go with what programs. Just, I mean, there's hundreds of these file extensions. Well, the good news is if you're out on your hard drive, you go into a file explorer and you come across a program and you wonder what programs could I use to open up this particular file? This is a PDF. If I right click on that file, I'm presented with a menu. And one of the options on this menu is the Open With option. If I click on that, it will show all the programs that can be used to open this particular uh, kind of file. Now, I could click Adobe Acrobat right now and it would open, but let's say I always want to use Adobe Acrobat. Then at the bottom, I select Choose Another App. This takes me to another page that looks like that page we started with. Right now you can see I've selected Adobe Acrobat Reader as my uh, default program. And at the bottom, I can check the box that says always use this. So here's a way for me to, after the fact, change one particular file to where it opens with a program that I wanted to open with. One last thing, a bonus. Many people don't know how to properly shut down Windows. The proper way does not involve touching the power button on your computer. In fact, you can use it just with the keyboard or the mouse. If you press the Windows key to open up the Windows menu, there's a power icon right in the Windows menu. Click on that. You'll be given a menu where you can click the shutdown option. Then you'll see a little scrolling wheel that says it's shutting down and eventually the computer will turn off. That's pretty much everything you need to know to get started with optimizing your use of a new computer. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I created the presentation that you just saw. Maybe there were some techniques in there that you had not seen before. I'll go through each one of them.